Hello everybody, welcome back. Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts here. And this is video number four, I think, on printing photos on fabric using the process of sublimation. Now up until this point, we have talked about what sublimation is in video one. In video two, we edited, edited our photo using a program called GIMP. In video number three, we cropped our photo and we actually made a little collage with some text using a program called Inkscape. All three of those videos are in a playlist. Uh, you can find that in the description box below if you've missed any of those videos, which brings you to this video where we're going to open the PDF. I'm going to show you my preferred print settings to get some really nice results when printing and sublimating photos on fabric. And uh, here in a little bit, when we move away from the computer, finally, I'm going to show you my printer. I'm going to show you the inks that I use, and I'm going to show you the paper that I use. So let's just dive right in. To this point, we have saved the collage we're going to make our pillow from, and we're ready to print this. So let me share my screen. It's going to look a little crazy for a second. So I'm here on the desktop. Now, when I print my PDFs, I like to use a program called Adobe Acrobat Reader. That is a free PDF software you can find on the internet. Uh, so I'm just going to open up Adobe Acrobat Reader right here, double click. And now we have to find where we have saved this pillow. So I'm going to go to my computer and I have to browse. And I know we saved it on the desktop. Let's scroll down. Print pillow. There we go. There's our file. I'm going to click on that and hit open. Now Adobe Reader is going to open up and I can scroll down and you can see here's my pillow. It is already mirror imaged. We did that in Inkscape and it is ready to print. Okay, so let's go up to this top bar and I'm going to click on the printer icon. When you do a box opens up and uh, these are all your print settings. So let's start right here. This little blue box, if we click on that, that's going to open up all of the printers that are available to this computer. Now I have two EcoTank printers. The EcoTank 2800 series is actually my desktop printer that I use for everyday printing like patterns and templates and documents, all that fun stuff. My printer that I use for sublimation is an EcoTank, Epson EcoTank printer. It is the ET15000 series. I bought this printer completely new. I never put the ink that came with it in the printer. Instead, I put sublimation ink in it. I cannot print patterns, templates, and all the normal printing stuff with that printer. It is solely for sublimation use only. We're going to click on the Epson 15,000 series printer. Now, uh, one thing I want to show you is the gray box in this screen. Uh, right now, you only see what would be an eight and a half by 11 uh, showing up in that box and everything is grayed out. We need to change the paper size, okay, before we move on because we saved this picture to print on a 13 by 19 inch sheet of paper. One other thing I wanna show before we move on is right over here in the middle of this box is page size and handling. I want you to notice then I have actual size selected before we move on. That's pretty important. All right, so let's go up to properties and let's click on the properties tab and that's gonna open up another box. So right here is where we're gonna change the paper uh, size first. So paper source, no, backtrack a second. Paper source, uh, I'm gonna click on that and that's going to give me a couple of options. Now, when I print using my sublimation printer, I have gotten in the habit of loading my paper from the back of the machine instead of using the built-in tray uh, for my paper. So I'm going to select paper tray. 
and now the document size. We're going to click on that. And these are all the presets for the printer. So if you were printing eight and a half by 11, you would choose the letter size eight and a half by 11. Now uh, we saved the document we're printing for this video as a super B, which is 13 inches by 19 inches. I'm going to click on that. The next thing I want to print for really nice print results is the paper type. Uh, by default, it just comes up plain paper, bright white paper. We're going to click on that. And I like to scroll down to premium presentation paper mat. We're going to click on that. And we're going to change the quality from standard to high. Everything else looks really good through all of this. I'm not going to change any of that. But before we move on, we're going to go back up to these top three tabs and we're going to select more options. That's going to bring us over to this menu. Uh, I like to change my print settings when printing photos uh, for sublimation. So right in the middle of this screen, it says color correction and usually it's checked automatic. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose custom. When I do, the advanced option is now uh, able to be clicked on. So we're going to pick advanced. Another box pops up and we have some options. I think by default it's on fixed photo. But what I really want to do is be able to manually choose my settings. So I'm going to choose color controls right above it. And uh, the first thing I usually change is the color mode from Epson Vivid to Adobe RGB. The gamma is now able to be changed. Uh, I have two selections, 1.8 and 2.2. I keep it on the 2.2. I'm not sure what the difference is. I get good results with this. And now we can come down to uh, the color circle or we can choose side slide bar, right? Uh, I like to choose the slide bar and uh, all of these settings you might need to experiment with, right? You might be using different inks, different paper and a completely different printer. So my suggestion is grab some stuff and experiment with these settings until you find one that looks really great for you. But I've already done that. I know for my printer and my inks and paper, I like to bump the contrast up to a six and the saturation to a three. See those numbers change? Everything else I leave exactly the way it is. At this point, we can hit OK. Uh, one more thing, if you forgot to mirror image your design, like in a program like Inkscape, you can do that here. You could click on that and it would mirror image your design for you. We've already done that, so I'm not going to select that. We've made all the setting changes, right? So we're going to say OK. And when we do, you'll see that gray border box disappear and the full image that we're printing now fits in my paper, which is 13 inches by 19 inches. Everything else looks great. You might want to save this as a default so that you can quickly print. Um, but those are the settings that I choose each time. So at this point, we are done at the computer. All I have to do is hit print and we're going to move over to the printer. You can see my printer and the paper going through. One thing I do want to say is when printing with this, these settings, it is not a fast process. Uh, we are printing, we are putting down a good amount of ink on that paper and the printing process is a little bit slow which is good because that means we're going to get a really high quality print, which is going to transfer to our fabric during the sublimation heat press process. Let's move over to the printer. So I wanted to show you before we actually move over to the printer, uh, sublimation paper. 
This is the brand of paper I'm going to be printing my uh, pillow top on. This is the A-Sub uh, 13 by 19 sublimation paper. Uh, for this one, I'm going to be using the Eco uh, type of sublimation printer. However, I have been experimenting and loving the results of using hammer mill paper. I'm going to put that up on the screen here. Uh, you can get this on Amazon. I will put a link down in the description box and I'll also link this paper too in case you want to try either one uh, when sublimating. This um, A-sub paper is really nice because on the back side, the wrong side, it has writing. See that? So you know which side you're printing on. The hammer mill paper, uh, I haven't seen a difference printing on either side of that paper. Uh, there might be a right side and a wrong side, but I haven't figured it out and I get great results using both. Uh, so for this series, I'm going to print one of my pillow tops on the A sub paper, and I'm going to print one of my pillow tops on the hammer mill paper, and we're going to sublimate both of them so you can see the results and decide which paper you want to use. But this is the paper I'm going to load into my printer. Next, let me show you the inks before we start printing. When it comes to sublimation ink, there are many, many different brands to choose from. When I bought my printer for sublimation, uh, the first ink that I tried was the Hypo ink, and I've been very, very pleased with it. So this is the ink that I use in my printer. These are refills. Uh, I'm going to link this down in the description box as well if you want to check it out. This ink is totally different than the ink that came with my EcoTank printer. That ink is not good for sublimation and this is a special ink that we're using. So um, if you are thinking about converting an EcoTank printer or if you're thinking, if you just bought one and you're looking for ink types, this is what I'm using today. So let's move over to the printer. So here we are at my printer. Again, this is the Epson EcoTank 15,000 series. Um, you can watch lots of review videos and how to set it up for sublimation here on YouTube. Uh, again, I like to source my paper, especially the large paper. You only really have one choice, the paper tray. I'm going to first load the sublimation paper, the A sub paper into the back. That is a big sheet of paper. <laughs> Usually I do it from the other side. There we go. And we are ready to print. So uh, we're going to fast forward through this part because it does take a good hot minute for it to print a larger print like this with the settings that we've used. So I'm going to go hit print and we will fast forward. Okay, here we are done with the printing. So one of the things you'll notice when you first get into sublimating, sorry, my printer's gonna make that noise for a second, is that when you print your photos on the fabric, you might notice that the colors and the print is kind of dull. That is completely normal. You'll be surprised what these colors do once we add some heat on the fabric uh, and we actually heat press this. So this is the print with the A sub paper. Now, just for fun, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and load the hammer mill paper in the back and we're going to print a second one of these copies. 
and I'm not going to make you sit through watching it print one more time. I'm going to go ahead and just print this off camera and we're going to set these prints side by side and we're going to take a look before we heat press at the difference. Okay, we are done printing both copies. You have the A sub paper on the left and this is the hammer mill paper on the right. Visually, you can see quite a difference, right? But you'd be surprised what this hammer mill uh, copy is going to do on fabric. Visually, it looks like a big difference. Um, the cost difference though, between the two papers. So this is 13 by 19 A sub paper is in the 30 to $40 range for a hundred sheets. The hammer mill paper is like $39 for 500 sheets. So there is a big price difference between the two. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to share that with you is because cost effect, the cost wise, you might be really pleased with the hammer mill paper uh, and have some A sub paper for those very special jobs. Uh, but we're going to heat press both of these so that you can see the results of both and make a determination from there. So at this point, we're done printing. And next we're going to do a video on the fabric I use and uh, an interfacing that I like to use. And we're going to actually press these copies onto fabric and we'll be finishing up pretty soon. So I'll see you in the next video.